let us know right now so we can start taking the live recording. Is everyone okay with taking photos and videos? Awesome. Um, before we start um, on this program, I would like to take the opportunity to acknowledge the traditional territory of the people of Treaty 7, which includes the Blackfoot Confederation, uh, the Sutina First Nation, and the Stony Lakota. The city of Calgary is also home to the Métis Nation of Alberta. Just a few housekeeping notes before we start. Um, there are emergency, emergency engines right in front of you, on your left, on your right. The washrooms are past the door B on your right side. We also provide you with food hampers at the end of this program. Um, so today we celebrate community-led research and share insights on challenges faced by Nepali Calgarians in access to primary care. This research, uh, conducted by UFC uh, in collaboration with NCSC and local communities, features findings from many of you who participated. So let's dive into the collective discoveries. Um, to start the program, I invite on stage the researcher at City of Calgary who devotes his remaining time as project lead and all-rounder at NCSC. Please welcome Dr. Gopal Bhatta. Thank you, Lizzie. Um, my name is Gopal Bhatta, and I look after the FDS Community Society of Calgary's uh, project activities. Um, first of all, I would like to welcome everyone for today's very important knowledge dissemination session um, here at the Genesis Center. Um, back in 2019 20 I guess, a team of researchers from the University, University of Calgary implemented a project aiming to find out challenges associated with accessing primary care uh, services um, and it was implemented in uh, by recruiting Japanese immigrants in Calgary. Uh, I think the project was concluded in 2021 with series of uh, academic publications. Oftentimes, the research are work in a silo. That means their um, findings, research findings are mostly limited to the publications without having a provision of uh, feedback loop. As far as I know, Professor Todek, he has different uh, vision. Whatever research he does in community, his research team does in community, he comes back to community for dissemination and establishing a uh, uh, feedback loop. On behalf of Nepalese Community Society of Calgary, I would like to thank uh, Professor Dr. Chaudhary for providing a platform to us to know the research findings and an uh, opportunity to ask questions uh, in the arena of his uh, research, his, his, his research teams in you know, a uh, specific area of interest. <clears throat> Um, I, I am by profession and qualification, uh, I am a researcher. I, I am fascinated to crunch the numbers and the feedback and uh, you know, translate those you know, numbers and the feedback into you know, valid documents like results, build community. I think most of you remember that in 2021, together with uh, class, together with senior society, we implemented a project aiming to scope out and prioritize activities and issues that are applicable to the seniors by implementing robust scientific methodology. And I was looking to, to disseminate whatever uh, we found through series of, series of uh, focus group discussions and interactions and surveys to you know, disseminate our learnings and findings to other communities as well, and, and even in the academic platform. And it was a press center. They provided us a way to, to, to go to the academia. And we submitted our uh, um, abstract uh, to Newcomer um, Research Network um, workshop. Unfortunately, it was, it, was, it was accepted, 
And we had a poster for Dentison there and also one for Dentison. And thank you, Chris and our team for providing this opportunity. And we are really into the academia as well. Not only that, the NCSC is working closely with other universities. We have two beautiful ladies here. They, they establish our connection with Montreal University through memorandum of understanding for two years. So the NCSC is not only providing community services, but we are also doing some kind of research. Um, we have just concluded our uh, meeting, so Nepali Mela meeting. Today, I would like to take an opportunity to talk uh, something about Nepali Mela. I think most of you have witnessed a great success of first episode of our event last year. And this year, we are, we are trying our best to make the event even more successful, more inspirational, and more diverse. And we need your input. We need your volunteer hours, and you need your support. So please come forward and help us planning, managing, and implementing events. It requires huge and huge amount of volunteer contributions. And it's our event. And through this event, we are striving to disseminate or promote our culture and to also learn from other cultural world. The most important part of your contribution is to, to uh, disseminate the word about Nepali Mela in your uh, workplace. If everyone brings one uh, colleague from your workplace, now you can imagine how much would be the volume of the digital in our event. So I, I think um, you will play the role and I, uh, on behalf of the NCSC and the um, entire uh, Nepali Mela organizing um, committee, I would humbly request for your support uh, to make uh, our event more successful. Um, last but not the least, thank you so much again for your participation. I am pretty sure you will learn something from today's session. Please disseminate those knowledge to your dear ones because this is related to the health. So any, anything that uh, you are getting today or you are learning today, please disseminate like, the information to those who are unable to attend today's session. Thank you so much and have a nice day. Dr. Gopal Matra for your welcome remarks and information on Nepali Mela. Our next presenter is an active woman who recently completed her master's education in community health science from the University of Calgary. Congratulations. Uh, currently, she is working as a research associate in the Department of Community Health Science at UFC. Please welcome Mrs. Kalpana Tapa. <laughs> Already still in the back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Sridhana. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank, on behalf of Grace and personally, I'd like to thank all of you for being here today. Uh, just uh, I would like to talk about the little bit about uh, our Grace Center. The full form of Grace is Center for Research, Education, and Social Service. To, to keep in our mind that research, education, and social service. If we bring together and then if we work parallelly all those sectors, then we can like enhance and improve the health uh, quality and improve uh, health quality and quality well-being of community people. That's why we started this organization. Uh, so about us, we are non-profit organization registered under the Societies Act of Government of Alberta, and our vision is to bring a center of excellency that brings research, 
education and social development together to achieve the social and economic prosperity of uh, community people as well as citizens. So our mission is better quality of life and community prosperity. Our values are innovatively, we, we just, uh, we uh, move quickly and continuously to innovate our approach in response to the need of the community people. So we work collaboratively and we act uh, bottom-up approach and we also work for uh, collectively community action, similarly service diversification as well as uh, we include social inclusion. Uh, our focus area are but not limited to seniors, women and children, youth, uh, similarly mental wellness, and then as well as research. Uh, these are, I would like to highlight some of the products we have, we already completed uh, during like uh, three months or six months ago. Uh, fostering multiculturalism via arts and craft that was funded by Calgary Foundation and City of Calgary. And we also completed uh, other um, projects breaking the barriers, enhancing mental awareness funded by uh, uh, Action Dignity and Calgary Foundation. And we also did intergenerational art and craft. So uh, our, our upcoming projects are senior project and anti-racism, multicultural project, as well as youth and mental health project. We will be uh, doing this project in future in the near future. So at last, I would like to uh, uh, thanks to our co collaborative partner, uh, NCSC, and uh, Dr. Kulit Jawad University of Calgary. It's our great pleasure to work together. Similarly, like our funders are uh, Calgary Foundation, Calgary, City of Calgary, Action TGD. We would like to thank them from the bottom of our heart. Uh, thank you for, for further con contact. You can just email us or Email us for, for the information of if you, or if you have some comment, recommendation, or feedback. So, thank you, everyone, for listening. I like the podium, so. Um, so, thank you, Mrs. Arna, for your presentation. Our next presenter is an associate professor in the Department of Family Medicine at the University of Calgary. His research work includes mitigation of barriers to healthcare faced by immigrant community. He has received dozens of awards in recognition of his scientific work and community contribution. And he also happens to be an introvert like me. Uh, please welcome Dr. Tanvir to interview. He, he just, he's a new extrovert. <laughs> so I'm a, how do you call it, like a forced extrovert. <laughs> like, you know, like all the characteristics of introvert is me, and she identified that we match. <laughs> so, uh, Shubhadin, thank you guys. Uh, especially, it's an honor to be here. And, uh, you know, the team, Vishnu, Kalpana, Kamala, Rudra. Uh, the story started in 2000, I think, 15 ish. Uh, so I was, I think Dr. Vatra, you mentioned that you were an agriculture. So I was, a, I was, and still I am, a, I was a number crunching. I did my PhD in number crunching. I came to Canada with a postdoc for number crunching. At that time, we didn't have, Kamala will say, we didn't have AI at that time. <laughs> we didn't have, you know, machine learning at that time. We had our learning, and then, you know, big data analytics, million people data prediction modeling, algorithm, that was my life. But few things changed. The story is like, I grew up in Bangladesh, so my birth is in Bangladesh, and uh, whenever I opened my eyes, in front of me, everybody was Bangladesh. Yes, there is sexism there, genderism is there, the, you know, uh, economicism is there, uh, educationism is there. There is no less ism than any other thing, but the only thing there was not is this racial and ethnicism. So it was interesting because there, everything, I was a local boy. Then I went to Japan to do my PhD. So it was interesting because again, when I'm in front of my eyes, predominantly everybody was Japanese. So I was a very much non-local foreigner. In my first 
you know, few decades of my life, totally, totally local, a few years in Japan, totally, totally foreigner. But when I came to Canada, I think I started realizing I'm neither a local, neither a foreigner. And this neither local and neither foreigner, this, this started getting into my head because I started seeing and being the, one of the privileged ones, being in the, you know, living with the smoother integration, that these are impacting everybody, including my wife, including my close friends and everything. So I got this lifetime opportunity because you got hired as a number cruncher. It's difficult to you know, switch things being in a job. So I got this lifetime opportunity to do something that I would love to do. Talk about this gray zone. And the, my research focus, I dedicated, like if I can help people as well as doing something in the gray zone area. And then I moved towards this immigrant, refugee, visible minority, wellness, integration, and these issues. And that took me from number crunching to the community-based research type of thing. So at that point of time, when I was you know, trying to build our understanding, the brand, and the name, and everything, I think I met in different aspects, like Vishnu, uh, definitely Rudra, the China as well, Kalpana, Kabbalah. And then these guys wanted to do something within the Japanese community as a research, and again, we thought it, it would be a great topic for research, and also self-improvement, because me doing research within the Bangladeshi community, I believe made me a better man today who I am. So again, career-wise also, hopefully that it will contribute to the career development as well. So this research endeavors that is in a, in a sort of a, not an end in the stage of the first level, then the next level, who knows what, if we can push it through to that one. So that has happened. So, and then another thing I just wanted to bring in front of you, that when I was doing the research in the Bangladeshi community, I was the insider researcher. That means I am part of the community. Interestingly, despite my thoughts that I will go, be me, be me, be me, I will like you know, do everything with research, it didn't happen in that way. Because our communities are not that much accustomed to do research in, with them in Canadian context. So people get a little bit of, you know, what does student want? So it gave me the idea that despite I thinking myself as an insider, I really am a partial insider when I take my community hat out and put my research hat in. That was an interesting realization. And then working on it, overcoming it, doing research, and this is a, we call it an infinite game. That's more of a knowledge. We want to be healthy. So this is an infinite game. But within that, there are finite games. Oh, summer soccer, winter indoor soccer, winter badminton, summer cricket for somebody. That is a start and end. But the infinite game, that doesn't have any end. That's a simply improvement. Uh, we are playing the infinite game of improving communities integration or whatever it is. More and more our young generation, more and more our own people will get into better jobs, better places of decision making. But within that, we plan, we need to plan finite games. And one of the only way I can contribute, because I'm as there is a disclaimer, I am good for nothing else apart from research. So I'm a good for nothing researcher. And my wife will attest to that, that I don't know anything else other than doing research. So my research games are the finite game. And that's what the game Vishnu played, Rudra played, Kamala played, Kalpana played. And you know, during that period, I met a few other people. Uh, Badri is here, right? Uh, Sharmila is here. We met them and we move forward. Today, the results of those moving forward will be presenting in front of you. And these are results with coming from the community with the communities and you know hopefully we can take it to the next level based on the way we can we think and move it forward okay so that's all who i am why i do what i do and just one the one thing i just love what i'm doing with the hope like you know more people get into it and for the community that i say insider partial partial insider here my role is as an outsider researcher champion to 
help the insider researchers. So uh, I'm happy that it worked to some extent. I will be more than happy to contribute more as an outsider researcher champion to help insider researchers. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Chaudhary, for sharing your experiences and um, information on research highlights. Our next presenter holds a master's degree in healthcare management and MSc in community health science from University of Calgary. He carries over 20 years of experience in the healthcare industry. Currently, he's working as a research coordinator in the Department of Pediatric at UFC. Please welcome Mr. Vishnu Bazai. I think I'm, I'm going to go mix kind of language. Is, is everyone okay? Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, again, my name is Vishnu. I am uh, one of the, the research team of this project. Uh, today, I'm glad to uh, bring you all here to together uh, to share some of the collective ways uh, that we have been we collected during that research project. So the basically, in terms of the background of the, the project, as Chaudhary uh, mentioned already, we, like, we as an immigrant, we, we, we thought that there are a lot of issues going on in terms of accessing healthcare services. So basically, so and then we, we wanted to know what's going on around the community because me as an immigrant, I also encountered a lot of uh, the barriers in accessing healthcare, like the, especially the primary healthcare services. So we thought just come together to do like explore some some uh, the research or do some investigations. What's going on? What are the common common problems have like happening uh, among our community? And those concepts was like we discussed in the beginning as a team. Uh, so uh, for the just for the uh, like background. So uh, as I mentioned, said we, we did have some kind of research in the community, the primary healthcare services. So the primary healthcare, as we all know, the primary health of services meaning it is a first contact point of getting the services in, in, uh, in into the healthcare system. So basically in Canada, like we we get our services that will that will be the first contact point. The meaning like we go to the family doctors, we go to the diagnostic services, we go to the different. Uh, the service accessing, so that is the primary healthcare services. So we wanted to do some kind of the, the work on the, the primary healthcare access uh, area. Yeah. So uh, as we know, like we have seen those kind of issues. What are the challenges? We as an immigrant, as a new immigrant coming to Canada in accessing healthcare services. So uh, those are the some issues. Like as you all, all of have experience, or we have been. Like the seeing that one in the future as well. So uh, in that case, immigrant experiences like a lot of like the uh, because they moved to the Canada, so they, they experience uh, like they experience a lot of challenges. For example, different culture, different language. Like in terms of the cost, we'll talk more about that one as well. They especially like I, I need to go to the doctor, but I don't have a time because I need to go to the work. I need to take care of my kids. So kind of those issues and uh, the communications. We will we'll, we'll talk about that one as well, and then the structure of the healthcare system itself is a, is a kind of the uh, the barriers we might have encountered. So those are the just the background kind of giving an idea like what are the challenges we might as a general immigrant might have experienced. Yeah. So uh, if you talk about the background, let's yeah, talk about the at least some of the kind of those things and then if we talk about the re reason for the immigrant, we all know that one kind of like a family reunion, reunion or escape from the tragedy. That is happening in like the back home, or better lifestyle or good health. That are that are the, some of the reasons could be we migrated here. So if you talk about the uh, the populations that, uh, so if you see like the twenty three thousand, so according to the uh, 20, 2021 uh, start, so uh, this is just the, like the twenty three. If it says like the twenty three thousand four hundred twenty five people. Express they they speak on a, like the Nepali uh, language, so that's how they start Canada say, but which is not the correct number of I would say correct number of the native populations living in Canada. 
Uh, so in Alberta, if we talk like it, it shows like the around 6,000 people living uh, uh, in Alberta. And then like the, in 2021, NRA, they did some kind of uh, the, the preliminary kind of the data, and it shows like around 50,000 people, Canadian, like the people from Nepal living in Canada. <coughs> And which is like Nepalese uh, uh, populations in Canada is the fast growing as like other immigrants, and then it is expected 30% by 2020, uh, like 2036. And then if we talk about the the healthcare seeking kind of things, it is influenced by various factors. Why it is what what are the the factors? We'll be talking more on that one. And then barrier may exist in, in a new environment because we move to Canada, so that that could be the barrier itself. Why? Uh, it, it is like kind of those things. So those are just giving a, a background and then kind of enable these populations residing in Canada. Yeah. So what what do we want to do in that in that context? So as I mentioned, like I, as an as an immigrant, I also uh, experienced a lot of barriers in accessing healthcare services in Canada. So in that case, we wanted to know like as as a team, we wanted to know like what's going on kind of. So in that case, what we thought is like, is the really we are meeting a need? What we need, what we want to have in healthcare access. So, is like only primary healthcare is meaning like this example. I need healthcare services, but I'm not getting that one. We did not. So, we we created a like kind of line. Since 12 months, I'm supposed to get a healthcare services, but I'm not getting it. It's called by definition only healthcare need. So, we wanted to know how many people are who are the people or uh, like they are not meeting their health needs. So we wanted to explore that one. And also we wanted to explore delay in accessing healthcare services. So if I'm delaying, if I'm not getting a healthcare services on time, meaning I'm, I'm doing a delay. So what are the reasons we wanted to know that one as well? The other, other part is like, the, what are the challenges? What are the barriers that are happening to access the final healthcare services? So what are the barriers that community people are having? So we wanted to explore that one as well. And then also we wanted to know from the community people what would be the solution for that. So we explored that one also. And then the other topics we, we explore is health literacy. What, what is the how, like how we uh, explain about the health literacy kind of those things. So we also explored that one. And then also we talk like prioritize what are the barriers, like what is the top barriers? What are the first, second, third barriers? That is a Stopping us to accessing healthcare services. So those are the like the the area we explore during that project. Uh, I will be talking more about the uh, only healthcare healthcare need in terms of the primary healthcare, and then my colleagues team going to be talking the next topics. Can you go to the next? So as I mentioned, like we wanted to explore what are the only healthcare need. So the objective was to assist only healthcare needs and vulnerabilities inside the Calgary. So what did we do? We did a survey. We had a self-administered <laughs> questionnaire that was uh, that was a design in collaboration with uh, the team of researchers, and then we implemented that one. So we we distributed almost like the 500 surveys among the community people, and we got uh, like 400 401 responses. This is huge. So I, I would like to take this uh, moment as an opportunity to thank to those who participated or the you're gonna feedback for the survey. And the so uh, for the results, so we, we see like almost 50 percent of the respondents, like 200, out of 401, 50 percent of respondents, they say they have only healthcare, meaning they are not getting the services on time. They are not getting the services because of the various reasons. We'll be talking about that one. So who are the more people, like who are the people they say only healthcare need? Meaning like the, the maximum people is, uh, 45, 55 and above, they said they have on with healthcare need. Unemployed people, they said they have a, on with healthcare need. And those who say they don't have a family doctor so far, even like, uh, like we, 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 like maybe, because I'm going to talk more about that one. So, who are the people they said they don't have a family doctor? Even we found some of the people, like some of the, our people living in Calgary or Canada for 10 years, still struggling to get a family doctor. So, those are the people they say they have only healthcare needs. And those who don't have insulin, tolerance, they say they have only healthcare needs. And those who have a chronic diseases, for example, other than the regular ones, like the other diseases, for example, diabetes, for example, 
like the, the other other piece of the disease, the chronic diseases, so they, they say they have only health care. So uh, what are the services they are expressing that, okay, these are the area we are not having the services on time. Meaning like the list, we, we, we like in a questionnaire, we gave like the list of the services, included that in the primary health care services. So, and then those are the services they say, oh, I'm not getting a service on time. I'm not, I, I have on me health care leave. So those are the dental and related services, dental related services. Referral, like they specialize, uh, not a plan, like uh, also like it was a design like the what would be the, what is the highest, like the, the percentage of on with healthcare services. So dental and related services are the highest one. Referral services, like specialist services, as we know, like if I go to the family doctor, I can get it maybe, but if COB refers to that services to the specialist, you know that and how long it takes. Six months, one year, two years, <coughs> kind of things, right? So referral <coughs> services, vision related services, obviously dental and vision, it is not covered by the Alberta Health Services. So definitely that comes up. And then the family physician, even family physicians also, like if somebody needs to go to the family doctor, they still getting a hard time to access those services. So what are the reasons not getting a healthcare services on time? Basically, so we categorize based on the, uh, the accessibility, availability, and acceptability, but the more on the waiting time is the highest reasons people say I'm not getting your services because I have to do it long. So if we talk about the accessibility, the cost is one of the reasons they are not getting your services on time. Distance and transportation, some of the people they mention is that like, oh, I, I don't get that services around my, where I live here, nearby. So distance and then there are some of the, even the newcomer, they don't have access like the, like, they don't drive. So some of, like the distance or transportation also the challenges. <clears throat> Similarly, if you talk about the availability, wait time, as I mentioned, we are not available when requested. I need to go to the doctor tomorrow, but I'm not getting a doctor tomorrow because I have to wait. So not available when I requested. Here not available in, in the area, as I mentioned. And then the acceptability. So there are there are other reasons as well. Acceptability meaning like not sure way to get the services. Language, here are other challenges, definitely. Well, it, it was fucking adequate. So I thought, I'm going, I, if I go to the doctor, I thought they're gonna cover everything. Like they're gonna give me a holistic like the approach of the, the services. But they, like, if you go to the family doctor, they're gonna talk only or one or two issues only at a time. So they felt that it's inadequate. Dislike doctor, afraid because of the culture, because of the, they're not getting the same gender doctor. So those are the, those are the issues uh, the reasons that they are they have on me have their need. Yeah, so what are the impact? We ask, what are the impact if you don't get a services on time? And then we categorize it into two sections. One is a personal impact, the other one is economic impact. So personal impact meaning mental health issues. Personal impact meaning like not only me, but also my surrounding. Or like the mental health also impacted due to because I'm not getting the services on time. Overall health deteriorate, and that like the my health is deteriorated because I'm not getting the services on time. So that is the, the one. And then the problems with activities in daily living that is also uh, like the impact of individually. Whereas if we if we talk about the economic, they also mentioned that use medicine like because they are not getting the services on time, they are using over the counter medicine. Increase dependency because I, somebody has to take care of me. Increase the use of over the counter drugs and then loss of income as well. So, uh, yeah, so so basically, so the, the overall the conclusion is like there are huge issues on the healthcare need, not only in the community, but also overall immigrant population, especially maybe immigrant population. So, it has to be addressed, I guess, on time. So, that is my part, and then I'd like to yeah. thank you for listening. And then Thank you, Mr. Briston, for highlighting unmet needs and delays in accessing primary care. So our next presenter holds Master's in Health Service Management from University of Rutgers. 
With extensive experience uh, serving marginalized population, his professional focus is on immigrant population. His um, uh, immigrant population health, disabilities, cancer prevention, and food insecurity. Presently, he serves as a research associate at the Department of Medicine at the University of Dublin. Please welcome Mr. Rudra Dahalansi. Thank you very much. Okay, for a correction, I have a master's in University of Calgary, but I have a university in Nepal. I have a period of four years in Nepal. English. English. Okay. English. 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 You can do mix. Mix. Okay, this is next. So, first of all, I would like to acknowledge my team of this research myself, Kalpana, Vishnu, Kamala, Apex is not here, I think. Uh, Jessica is also not here. Nasipa and definitely Dr. Turi. Please, next one. So, uh, sorry, my uh, research question was. Barriers of accessing primary health care in Nepalese community residing in, in Calgary. So, for this, we uh, give three objectives of this research to learn experience with PSC access, what's the male's perspective, and another is what's the female's perspective, and another is what are the recommendations or viewpoints they express to resolve the, those barriers or those problems. So, I am going to group my training as like, I am going to go to the first barriers are one of the experience where you learn about yourself. Those who are saying, definitely gender wise, accessing my product, pocket and sub, and you put a literature in the council. I am female perspective to research problem, पत्ता <laughs> Uh, research question and open in, open ended question are sent so they got you. Uh, the way I help your experience by the Kerry, I could access by the Kerry, key summer share of town, the way I cost for Laksa, a family physician, access by the Kerry, Kitty of Terra, Arabi, Bandikuras, and Amity Moana, so they got you. Rathu focus group discussion go. Some kind of parts and ambits and audio record the need of note taking the different garage. You can only carry audio the camera like I can note say adequate now or the language is like do we math and math and test like an amity caps are the record. The totals and amity are such a dana. Some of the same you under what the same garage at you. This one male, female, within the age group count on you. That's how we am very community is on you. Uh, yes, my results and question is to me only out of before the after uh, accessing primary care. What are the barriers before accessing primary care or before going to doctor? And what are the uh, barriers you face after accessing uh, that primary health care? Uh, before my think they get only communication for problem. Uh, appointment, you know. Phone Garu, the answer could have Buzna Garu, Buzona Garu, the second of the problem, or Nicolatio. Wait time to put a gather even family physicians, how family doctors, Bonai Sadi, which have an wait time, the lengthy Unsa, Ra appointment, you open in Gaira, the Lamo, some exit clinic from the Kuru Persa, and Nicola Arts and Bakutio. Knowledge on the related Kurabin Ayaki, knowledge on a healthcare ecosystem to where I am, it is very awards, I know it is very good out of half an hour. Health to Barry Open Amulet and very good Adam Knowledge, I know this way that I am using you some say about the EC Raika song, but you could have the services or services for some of my availability for Kurazi. Monday to Friday, I come back to 
Saturday, the doctor goes down, sounds so, but not to let them clean it or a valuable session. Other moon pen and over the Kipan will soon come for soup. Saturday, the doctor goes down, one day to let cleaning some of the one of the second hospital emergency done by or get to go over now. The barrier is over and that waiting for the person when you could have the aggregate. The culture to put over the Kerry Kennedy and healthcare, the Anilisun, Nepal, Nasim, Bogera, I could call the Next <laughs> एकदा <laughs> The most important frequent cost to you. cost dental vision. point must some in Sumanta, Nepal or are you interested in the case of 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 the Tesla Samasa, one of the money, or by appointment for the money. That is Samas. The Kulia could happen in Nogadi, the Kurasuni, you ask the very happy way. You can hear that in Samas. The culture pile is one is the Canadian culture, and the pile is a Bogiraki culture for differences. I could put a together. I will like any healthcare access done or some such or any good thing. It's for either money in the case. Our reasons are communication Amro Sampal Kramati Saro Takura, which an agate, Yota Pecti disses, Paneko Matavatabai, Tigani, Tio Road. Argo community Kupura Garasa, Amelia, I will say, and she is still I will have a lego, so and she is a Tigar, the Osa or Tis Ansaman in Tavata. This Pate provider or the store, healthcare professional, a salute clinic, or the Tigorma for Amra Samasia, Amro, first is ever at the salt of Panin Sunday on the Friday. Policy level of the case in the world is in the same way. So, the case is the same Individual, the case is the same way. 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 Applies in a body motivated Community community just figure that if some of the same or some of the same, then you can do it. Provided labor was a key guard of a clinic server, Basa Pulin and Manita, though I said the acting for it, the interpreter. 
उन्हीं इंटरप्रेटर को व्यवस्था कर दून पर्ने इंटरप्रेटर छेन फर एक्जापल नेपाली मैं आने उसके इंग्लिश बुझे अब हम कम्युनिटी में हमी मध्य कोई तो इंटरप्रेट कर सकता कनेक्शन करें कोलैबोरेटिवली काम गए कहीं फायदा होने किसिम को रो विभिन्न किसिम को कल्चर डाइवर्स कल्चर बड़ा हम आक कल्चरल डाइवर्सिटी विभिन्न किसिम को भाषा बोलने माने हेल्थ केयर प्रोवाइ प्रोविजन को लगी हायर गए समस्या को समाधान कर हम संबंध भाई डॉक्टर्स नर्सिस इंटरप्रेटर नेपाली होने समस्या को समाधान होता भाई रिकमेंडेशन भाग रिशी लेवल को धेरे ठूला एक्सपेक्टेशन हम ग्रुप ने राखे थे जस्तों धेरे इंटरनेशनली ट्रेन भर आगे डॉक्टर्स मेडिकल प्रोफेसनल वहाँ सजिलो कि पॉलिसी निर्माण करें वहाँ हेल्थ केयर सीस्टम में जान दी होने धेरे सजी कर क्लिनिक जो निश्चित आवर में मत संचालन भैया तिनी अलग एक्सटेन्डेड आवर में संचालन गये यो सेवा चाहिए बड़ी गुणस्तरीय रामी लीन सको जो चश्मा ने मगन नपरोस् फुका में नेपाल जान नपरोस्र यो भिजन रेन्टल लाइफ प्राइमरी हेल्थ केयर में इन्क्लूड कर दिए देखि हमें सजिल होने कुरा हम ग्रुप डिस्कसन में आगे थे अब हम कंक्लूड कर धीरे धीरे बारिर्स हम प्राइमरी हेल्थ केयर एक्सेस कर जो कई कुछ अगर बेचने भाई सकू मैं अगर डेस्क्राइब कर लेंदी वे टाइम कम्युनिकेशन में डिफिकल्टीज कल्चरल भेरिएसन हेल्थ रिनेटेड नलेज में तिहार कमी भर रर्विस लिमिटेड कारण तिहर बारिर् आगे भाई कुछ हमने कंक्लूड कर इस ओवरकम करना को कसरी हटाने भाजा ती बारिर् कल्चरली कंपिटेन्ट कि मानी सेवा प्रदान करने रपोर्टिव कि हेल्थ केयर सीस्टम भो इस हमें मैंडेट कर सक्यों ती समस्या क्रमशः हट्ते जा हमें यहाँ को हेल्थ केयर सर्विस इंजोय कर सकता भाई कंक्लूड हम ग्रुप डिस्कसन अथवा रिसर्च बा फ्यूचर डाइरेक्शन के बारे में हमें क्या करने तो अब अब अच्छी पीछे हम तब छलफल कर फ्यूचर डाइरेक्शन के अब के हम छलफल के क्रम में रिसर्च बढ़ाने जो हमी नेपाली मूल का छो तिनी अल बड़ी इंगेज भर स्वास्थ्य संबंधी रिसर्च बढ़ाने रम्युनिटी इंगेजमेंट बढ़ाने जहाँ कि पैले आगे जो एक्सपीरियंस इमिग्रेन्टर हो जो वहाँ हेल्थ केयर संबंध में एक्सपीरियंस प्राप्त कर सकूक वहाँ अरुला सीकाउं जाने हेल्प करते जाने रम्युनिटी इंगेजमेंट बढ़ाने रडवोकेसी पढ़ा जाने तो हेल्थ केयर को संबंध में फ्यूचर डिरेक्शन ही होना सकता भाई कुछ हम छलफल को क्रम में आगे थी अब यो विषय में मैं लीड कर तीनटा पेपर चाहिए पब्लिश भाग यहाँ लिंट्रेस्ट यो पेपर पढ़ने भाई सब कुछ फर्स्ट पेपर ये हो सेकेंड पेपर ये हो जहाँ चाहिए थर्ड पेपर हो तीनटा पेपर चाहिए हम लोग ग्रुप तर तीन पेपर को लीडिंग मैं कर पेपर चाहिए पढ़ने यहाँ धेरे इन्फर्मेशन प्राप्त कर सकूँ थैंक यू Thank you, Mr. Rudra Dahal, for your insight. Now let's welcome Mrs. Kalpana Thapa on health literacy and prioritization of barrier in accessing primary care. Thank you, Sujana. Uh, I'm here again to present the health literacy among Nepalese men, uh, Nepalese uh, immigrants. Uh, uh, regarding background, I would like to talk a little bit about the uh, health literacy. Health literacy, one, I'll say, 
जति पनि हेल्थ इन्फर्मेसनहरु छ त्यो हजुरले कसरी फाइन्ड गर्नुहुन्छ हाउ डू यु अंडरस्ट्यान्ड एन्ड त्यसपछि अंडरस्ट्यान्ड गरेपछि कसरी इम्प्लिमेन्ट गर्नुहुन्छ इभालुएट गर्नुहुन्छ ती कुराहरु चाहिँ सबै हेल्थ लिटरेसी अंतर्गत पर्दछ त्यो बीचको स्लाइडमा देखाएको छ इफ फर एक्जाम्पल इफ समबडी इज टेकिङ मेडिकेसन एन्ड कसैले आक्स गर्यो भने इफ नम्बर आक्स व्हाट काइन्ड अफ मेडिकेसन आर यु टेकिङ एन्ड दे दे विल एन्सर लाइक आई डोन्ट नो द नेम अफ द मेडिकेसन आई जस्ट I cannot pronounce the name of my pills. I ask for them by their shape, size, and color. This all falls under the category of health literacy. Basically, low health literacy को कारण में गौरव नहीं चाहिए। आगे लाइक barriers to take care of yourself and family. Similarly, it's hard to read prescription information, getting health important important health uh, uh, alert, and making informed health decision. Similarly, provide preventive diseases as well as peace of mind. These are the barriers of due to the low health literacy. So our objective was to understand the health literacy. How do we say that we need to try to understand the health literacy? How do we say that we need to try to understand the health literacy? We want to uh, understand. Uh, we, uh, we did self additional questionnaire and out of 500, uh, we got 401 responses. Uh, our health literacy is, uh, is status, uh, uh, we divided based on the literature, we divided into three categories adequate, marginal, and limited. Adequate, one, able, to, uh, able to read and comprehend most of the patient uh, material. So, Jatipani, your health related. सूचना प्राप्त मेटेरियल कसमेशन दी डोंडरस्टैंड फिर दोहरा दोहरा उसे मैं रिपिटेटिव ओरल डिरेक्शन चाहिए चाहिए रहे हो डेट इज लिमिटेड लिटरेसी एंड मार्च में अगर बने तो डेट्स ओके मतलब कॉल कॉल ऐसे ही मतलब बुध सु पर सम टाइम बुध सु सम टाइम बुध दिन है कॉल ऐसे ही मतलब दो राय रहे चाहिए जब दस आर ओके बने डेट इज मार्च में तो बेस्ट ऑफ़ ऑन द रेस्पोंसेस वी गोट लाइक लेस दें हाफ Uh, and 40% respondent they said they had marginal health literacy and 70% had limited health literacy basically for the amazing sources of health information is uh, what is the sources of health information you access when you store data view and those are the listed uh, like uh, they, they would like to get sources of health information from healthcare professionals such as like doctor but or nurse but or nutritionist but or what are the health information गुगल कर अर्क डिस्क्रिमिनेसन सोर्सेस जस्ट कि ब्राउसर पाम्प्लेट हु जी हमें क्लिनिक में जा डर को क्लिनिक में अथवा फार्मेसी में जहाँ जाना तो अवेलेबल भर रिसोर्सेस दो आर अंडर द कैटेगोरी अफ डिस्क्रिमिनेसन रिसोर्सेस सीमिलरली वी अल्सो आर्स व्हाट वाज योर प्रिफरेंस व्हाट इज योर प्रिफरेंस फर डे गेनिंग हेल्थ इन्फर्मेसन हजर अर्क प्राथमिकता के होता अभाइलेबल रिसोर्सेस बट हजर को हजर हर को प्राथमिकता के होता तो हेल्थ इन्फर्मेसन भाई राखी थी सो दोज आर द मिस्टेक लाइक मोस्ट अफ दी पार्टिशिपेट दे वांटेड हेल्थ इन्फर्मेसन फ्रम हेल्थ केयर प्रोफेसनल सर लाइक डॉक्टर बा डॉक्टर डॉक्टर नर्स अथवा न्यूट्रिशनिस्ट वहाँ देखो इन्फर्मेसन ही मैं बड़ी रिलायबल होने आसगरी कल्चरली सेंसिटिव लिफलेट इसमें कतिपय हम पार्टिशिपेट रेस्पोन्डेन्टर इफ पाम्प्लेट अभालेबल छी लैंग्वेज में अभालेबल भाई हमें इन्फर्मेशन गेन करना इजी होते भाई कुछ आगे दैट इज कल्चरल सेंसिटिव लिफलेट और पाम्प्लेट अभालेबल एट दी हेल्थ सर्विस सेंटर्स 
they want uh, they want to gain uh, gain health information from internet or google they rely upon that one too so the last one uh, not last but th these are the difference and family sati you want to be uh, so, the uh, information in some of the crowd, if you have a topic, all papers If you are interested, you can Google it and go through that paper. This, this paper is on pipeline. Uh, uh, so, I'm just saying that we need all the to bear around accessing primary health care. Yes, Martin. Which one you prioritize the most? We ask uh, our respond, our participant, and uh, the objective was to to rank pre identify uh, primary healthcare access topic based upon the perceived importance. Importance for our respondent of the like is a important lesson. So, this part of we ask to prioritize those uh, topics, and then based upon the responses, so one number of the most priority ma poye ko the case is those number of the least priority ma wale rank one number of the workplace uh, workplace related barrier. Or the daily wale many explain goi sab ko those type of workplace related barrier. Malai se due sa appointment paye ko tarah office part of the malai kam ma se suchi paye na ma mere bacha. Transportation barrier is the second one, and third one is possible discrimination. This is a long way time. I think I don't need to explain by the one already explanation for each point. This very fast number was a lack of interest and caregiver system provider. So this is very hard. Because of which, so on the least priority, you say, okay, so you say, I'm priority to my form. Then, when you put that, cultural differences or preference, say, those come up my point. So, see here. This very conclusion. At conclusion, to conclude, limited and marginal health literacy were observed. So, to enhance health literacy, it is essential to reduce the health disparity. Health literacy. Low, uh, limited or marginal health literacy to carry on that we can see there is health disparity and, uh, within our community. So, to so like uh, multi-directional cultural cultural literacy community lead uh, collective initiative are needed to enhance uh, to uh, improve our well-being and community welfare. So, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mrs. Kopra. Um, just a reminder, feel free to grab your coffees and snacks if you haven't yet. Um, with this, we come to the end of our presentations. Now, I would like to invite Mr. Vishnu Bhattai to lead the group. Very good, Namaste. Hello, everyone. Uh, yeah, so my table now, do you guys have an agenda, a today's agenda? And if this must say each table my agenda is in that small one. If you don't have that one, please let me know and then let us know we can figure out figure it out. This must say group discussion one in us, group of topics say I'm able to make questions. So already if you really research research the boil, real research. So where like how this kind of research can be benefited to the community? How we can benefit from those kind of results? I will give a discussion, yeah, for opinion and uh, fine, that also will be helpful to make this research to the next step. I mean, again, you have to have a policy level, you have to have a lot of money, 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 you have to have a have to have a lot of money, you have to have a lot of money, you have to have a lot of money, you have to have no, it's sticky note. So we have a two questions. How could community people be benefited by this kind of research? Whatever you think. This particular saying stakeholders' role breaking the barrier. How your yeah, stakeholder meaning anyone, like the research team or the healthcare providers or the government, how they can break this kind of barrier. 
you say, yeah, yeah, after the table, my discuss here, you can discuss in your table, and then write down your point in a sticky note, and we will collect that one. Your feedback will be greatly appreciated. Um, will it hear also? And, and there is also like the, uh, the program evaluations form. Uh, my friend, you're gonna uh, like disseminate this form as well. Feel free to complete this one, just give a feedback, how is the program, and kind of those things. But again, back to uh, yeah, let you feedback the Munza about the the questions that general discussion person he has a problem of solving. Yes, my base for it, but you don't want to do it. We'd like to like come up some people to share their ideas, their, their thought as well for the place. <laughs> Yo, group discussion on a Budakiri, Yahu, the presenter like a question of the day, Jalama, so no one comes in the answer for the time. Group discussion with Carol is already also. If you have any question, you can ask to the presenter. And also, like, if you don't have any questions or you want to ask, you want to connect later on as well, you can see the, the team's email address here. Uh, you're more than welcome to connect. <laughs> Hello. Um, I have a couple of questions. That's the reason I just opened the door. <laughs> Sorry. I'm a researcher, so I always look after. I mean, I have a question. I always ask questions related to methodology. Uh, I think my questions are related. I mean, they apply to all three presenters. First of all, I know, just commenting on Vishnu's presentation, you said Netflix population would grow by 30% in 2036. I mean, expectation, I'm not sure. 30% is too big figure. I'm not sure what he is compared, comparing with. Um, shall I ask all my questions one time, one go or? Okay, sorry. Uh, in terms of accessing um, or finding the barriers for unmet need, how did you uh, did you select the uh, participant? I mean, recruited the participant. Was it um, kind of by selection, purpose selection, um, and what was their socioeconomic background? Especially um, um, whether uh, recent immigrants, let's say immigrants uh, who landed in Calgary. In last one year or two years, something like that, was considered taken into account because they are the people who really need uh, more education or the information. So that's one part. And another part is, did you just select PR holders, or uh, was your sampling technique selected um, sorry, uh, students, super visa holders, or temporary workers? That's another question. And I have a big question on sampling method. So perhaps it's there. Um, coming to Rudra's presentation, how were participants uh, for focus group discussion selected? You said uh, 12 uh, focus group discussion. Just wanted to know how were those participants recruited. Um, I have one question on Kalkman's presentation. How were those 10 barriers prioritized? What was the methodology of prioritizing those uh, 10 barriers? And I have one uh, just uh, feedback on health disparity. Health disparity is there everywhere, particularly in Canada or America, because these are the immigrant countries, and the disparity is always there. But if you are comparing with the disparity, uh, if relative to other communities, then that would give uh, you more precise Info, for example, uh, let's say just comparing Nepalese immigrant versus uh, Bangladeshi immigrant, which community has, um, uh, which community is facing more health disparity compared to one and another, something like that. Excuse me, I have a question, I have to answer the inside door. Thank you, Namaste, everyone. My name is Rajan Gautam. I'm a civil engineer professional, most of you know me. 
Uh, I have a, uh, just, uh, I like to thank you guys and then the, I have just a uh, uh, simple question regarding the First of all, uh, thank you. I like to thank you, NCSC, uh, for this uh, doing this uh, community related activities, including this research. And uh, I like to thank this uh, group like uh, Vishnu Bajgain, Kalpana Papa, uh, Rudra Dahalvi. You are doing a great job focusing the community. And uh, I like to thank uh, Professor Choudhury. You said the things I feel that I'm in the same boat that I'm from Nepal and, and here in uh, Canada. As you said, I went to study in Netherlands at that time. I feel that is a different country. I'm the immigrant. I mean, I'm the foreigner there. When I came here now saying I'm 50% Nepali, 50% Canadian, um, even not even the 50% Canadians, but I'm doing good at, in Illinois in here. In, and I, I studied here too. And uh, the other thing is uh, talking about uh, something in the community. We also thought that in community, I was I came here in Calgary in 2007, and then involved in the Nepalese community society in different uh, uh, aspect of helping, participating, and uh, volunteering to the community. And uh, and um, we were doing good and uh, I'm happy to tell you that uh, in that journey I was also the one piece of uh, brick to make the NCSC in this level. And I, I like to thank all those seniors and then the past uh, members of the Nepalese Community Society doing this and I I'm happy what the new leaders and then the community is doing for the uh, NCSC. Same uh, feeling in the same way. What we did is we are going to be a senior in the future, and, and, and as a little elder people in, in the common community, we decided to go for the mainly focusing on the seniors, and we thought we had we should have a focus and then do something in Canadian perspective. We decided with a couple of our colleagues, older colleagues, and then we uh, we formulated one uh, company, uh, community service company like uh, TOS, together with senior society in 2019. And after that, we are doing something and just working professional and do not have a lot of time, but we are focusing to do something uh, for the seniors and we established that and we are working on that. And then now so far we are coll collaborating with the NCSC and the senior part of the NCSC we are working on that. And I like to thank Dr. Uh, Gopal Bhatta for his uh, tremendous work to uh, for the supporting community, getting the funds from the uh, every level of the government, and I think we have uh, now we have one uh, on is coming, and I'm I'm glad to know that we got a seniors program. Just uh, I I saw in a mass email that he uh, he uh, communicated to everybody, and then I'm and. Myself and then Toss is willing to work on that as we were working so far to support uh, these uh, senior people in the community. And then now, before we had started and the COVID thing, we are a little slow, but working with the Nepalese community society, and we are thinking to go a little bit beyond the Nepalese community as we realize in the same way, and then we are working now collaborating with the um, Calgary Foundation. We should have, we are working with them and in the future we should have some programs from the uh, Calgary Foundation. And I'm glad to know that now, like the uh, Nepali Community Society, Bangladeshi Community Society, also going forward we'll go the, um, first in the South Asian community and then going beyond the 
uh, other communities in the globe as a Canadian perspective. So, and now this is the compliment, but my question now goes to the uh, presenter. All, all of you, this is a common question for all of you. First of all, I thank you very much for your effort. And then I like to know more about how you guys are doing and focusing for the future work to the, especially for the seniors. I saw their seniors have a very limited uh, uh, resources to get in and they have a very limited uh, opportunity to get. And my question is focusing to the uh, seniors, what is your plan and future, how you gonna do, and then as well as the NCSC, they are doing, but the focusing to one with the um, uh, health related to the senior. Thank you so much. Thank you for the question. Uh, question I am Kind of uh, ice paper or like that question for the the one. Most of the paper are available. So we have to find one one of the one. Okay. Um. Ah. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sir. To be specific uh, to uh, Rudran Sir's presentation, uh, the cultural, you talked a lot about cultural barriers, but you know, if you could say a little bit light uh, in, uh, in what are the different cultural barriers that are playing role in accessing primary health uh, or immigrants, that would be great. Thank you. Uh, 